everyone. Uh, my name is Mithun Prabhu. I'm an IT professional and uh, avid travel photographer myself. Uh, most of you uh, would know me. And I'm uh, with my pleasure, along with Honeycomb, I want to introduce uh, Mr. Deepak Samani, who, uh, who is uh, based out of uh, Leicester in, in the United Kingdom. And uh, he's uh, with us uh, in, in a conversation about travel photography. Welcome, Deepak. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon from my end. And I think it's good evening for you guys, right, Mithun? Absolutely. So, so you know, we, we have people from everywhere who will listen to the conversation. So it will be a morning, afternoon, evening and night also probably in some places. Yes. Super. So we have a summer heat wave here. It's 32 degrees and I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> it's unusual for us, but it's right. super warm today. Right. And I think uh, I should mention that uh, Deepak uh, is uh, a fantastic uh, travel photographer. I myself have traveled with him in multiple occasions in the past. Uh, uh, in addition to being uh, a photographer, he's an electrical engineer uh, by his uh, profession. And uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, like any, anybody from the UK, his sense of humor is absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Right. Yeah, you'll, have to, you'll have to excuse my uh, interruptions, <laughs> uh, infrequent interruptions, but uh, that's just the way it is, guys. Oh, so we would love to hear them as well, uh, Deepak. So uh, having said that, Deepak, uh, with your permission, shall we start the conversation? Sure, let's do it. Great. So Deepak, uh, just wanted to know, how did you come to love photography? Were there any early influences uh, in your life uh, as to how you got into this field? Okay, so my uh, interest in photography really go back uh, about three decades. When I got my first part-time job as a student, when I got my first pay packet, I went and bought a Practica MTL3 35 millimeter camera. Yeah, that is going back in time to 1983. Now I've revealed my age to all the young ladies there listening. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm not, I'm not in the running anymore. <laughs> so that's, uh, that, that really sort of uh, started it all. I was never really for anything else. I said, I want a 35 millimeter and I'm going to go and buy what I can afford at the time. And uh, it was my pride and joy for many, many, many years. And uh, then the whole thing escalated. Oh, tumare pas camera hai. Sorry guys, I'm going to interject and speak a bit of Hindi because I don't get a chance very often. So I hope that's okay. Yep. Absolutely. Is that okay, Mithun? Absolutely. Yeah, so it would be, you know, tumare paas camera hai, tum photo lo, ye karo, wo karo, you know, birthday pe ao, shadi pe ao. And uh, that really how it started. And then uh, as I started traveling a little bit more, firstly in the UK, and then uh, after graduating, I had many opportunities to travel abroad and so on. And... Uh, Really, that's how the whole thing kicked off. And uh, for me, uh, it was a very liberating thing, actually, uh, doing photography uh, in those early days. And right. it gave me a lot of joy. And I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, very, very few people, Deepak, I would like to uh, tell this to the audience, you know, especially the young, uh, you know, souls who are probably listening to us. You know, so those people who have graduated from the film days, you know, the roles and, uh, you know, the analog cameras, uh, like, like we used to say, uh, I think they are the ones who have uh, developed a lot of discipline into this uh, photography field. You know, the, the fact that uh, there was no uh, absolute uh, leeway available to click multiple, uh, you know, compositions you know, would not know uh, how an output will look like, like unlike today's uh, age where, you know, with every click you have, you know, uh, you can bracket, you can see how, how it is looking at least on a viewfinder level. So I think those people who have come, you know, in, in, including my mentor, uh, Mr. Anand Charan, he used to say, you know, that, uh, you know, the, the way the film cameras were and the discipline that uh, people brought in, if they bring in into the digital world, you know, the world will be a different place, especially in the aspiring photographers. I don't know what you think about it. Oh, I absolutely agree, Mithun. I mean, I still treat um, my photography and I'm, I absolutely ration my efforts, my time. I don't want to come home from a trip with 3000 shots and then having to 
download all of those, have the pain of managing them and searching them out. The idea is to be on in the field, get it right and still treat as if you only have two rolls of 36 if you have, if you are lucky. Right. And uh, that mentality, you know, I'm an old boy as, you, as it's visible from my appearance, that mentality stays and it never goes away, Mithun. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, you are too modest to say you are an old boy, but young at heart. So, you know, I think... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah so. I think we've had, we've had many fun times, Mithun. Absolutely. Great. So, uh, moving on. Uh, so, Deepak, uh, would you call yourself just a travel photographer, uh, you know, as a specialist or do you also practice any other genres of photography? Um, for me, really, uh, travel really is a culmination, largely for me, three main aspects coming to, uh, coming to four, if I talk about travel photography, from, from my perspective. One is street or people, call it what you like. Uh, the second one is landscape, which I think is what a lot of people associate travel photography with. And, mm. and because of my love for India and everything Indian, I think architecture absolutely plays a very big part with our fantastic uh, heritage that we have in India. Uh, so, for, yeah, I mean, broad brush, you can say travel, but that's what I really uh, would like to treat it as. So I'm very happy doing all three uh, at any time uh, as, as, the, as the opportunity arises for me. I also do event photography commercially in the UK, and I also do industrial product, product photography because uh, I work in that business. Uh, so now and then, but that is really uh, very seldom. Great. So good to know about uh, other things that you also do because, you know, I'm sure with your uh, profession and with you doing a lot of things, juggling between, you know, your professional, primary professional life and, uh, you know, the passion for photography, you really need to uh, bring in a lot of uh, you know, time and, uh, you know, just justify uh, for yourself you know, yes. the work that you do. Great. So, so what inspires you, uh, Deepak, uh, to keep pursuing photography? You know, because that's not your primary uh, job or primary field, right? Uh, no, but it's, it's, for me, the answer is really very straightforward. It brings me a lot of, it brings me a sense, sense of purpose, Mithun, and uh, it provides me with a lot of happiness. And most importantly, it keeps me straight and out of mischief. Uh, it, it, it keeps me sane, I can focus, I can just get on with it. When I'm at home, there are no other distractions, I can just focus on it. I'm, I'm in a fortunate position to be able to do that. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, the most important thing for me is I love people. And I especially love India, you know, having lived in Thane, Mumbai, Maharashtra for a few years. Um, I'm pretty good as a good Jew boy. Uh, in conversing in Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, a little bit of Punjabi. And the interaction then, uh, especially in India, uh, comes very naturally to me with people. So I, I love that uh, personal contact. It's more about the contact than about, you know, <coughs> taking a picture of somebody uh, just sat there from a distance, you know, taking a candid shot. I'd rather really approach people, but we'll talk about that hopefully uh, if time permits, uh, later on. Uh, the other thing is uh, having an electrical engineering background, I really am what I'd like to call myself a bit of a photon merchant. I really like uh, to understand what's actually happening at the sensor level, why we do what we do, how we do it, and uh, put it this way, that does float my boat uh, quite a bit. Absolutely, and I think... Uh... Uh, that's that's one of the most uh, critical things that you mentioned uh, for uh, uh, for a lot of people that probably are listening to us uh, that uh, you know you, you, it's it's not about it's easy to probably you know go ahead and click the shutter button and say oh you know what I have taken a picture which is what most of the people around the world who are not photographers who have a cell phone today in their hands think you know so it's just a click of a button you know so what we, we what we call as parachute photographers. You know, mm -hmm. so drop, drop at one location, click, 
move on, go to the next location, click again, move on, you know, kind of stuff. So, you know, so you have a lot of tick in the boxes, like they say, but you know, you, you really haven't studied anything. You really haven't experienced anything. And, uh, uh, you know, that's, that's something as a, you know, as a photographer, as a, uh, as a person who can document things, I think that's very critical. So, so that's uh, what we hear. I absolutely agree with you, Mithun. And, uh, you know, especially when you are with Gujaratis, the focus <laughs> is on the focus is on only one thing. Food. <laughs> yeah, so, so that that is the focus. So for, for all those people who do not understand Gujarati, do you want to translate that? It's very funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's basically, you know, we are here. We've taken a picture, selfie ho gaya. But now it's time to say, what's for lunch? Or if we've been out in the afternoon, what's for tea and dinner tonight? Photography is not important. Yeah, so I, I would, uh, I would uh, say that, you know, although you said it in a lighter vein, but I would uh, say that, you know, that's, I think, uh, across the world that, you know, uh, you know irrespective of uh, the countries or, you know, the nationalities that we belong to, I think, uh, you know, food is a very critical component uh, in our life. So, you know, uh, I think in addition to the photography or, you know, any prim primary profession that we do, you know, of course, you know, that's something that we look forward to. So I'm, I'm yes, sure. Yes, yes. But uh, I agree. But, you know, if, if you really want to have that endeavor of getting into photography, then I think it's important to basically just say, okay, you know, <clears throat> it's okay if I don't have a meal if I don't have something, you know, as long as I'm hydrated and I'm not feeling unwell, I'll make do without food and water, you know, right. for a while. But, you know, let's, let's do something different because I think there is a level of satisfaction in doing something different occasionally. Absolutely. So moving on, uh, Deepak, how do you feel when your work is viewed and appreciated by a large uh, audience? Uh, oh, that's a very tricky question for me, Mithun. I'm really, really, uh, not into uh, uh, sort of uh, showing my work uh, in, in, at, at such a great extent. Uh, I've really just, I photograph really for self-fulfillment. It's a, for me, it's a form of happiness, meditation, satisfaction, call it what you like. Really, you know, uh, if I get food, good feedback from guys like you on social media, then it makes me happy. But really for me, it's, it's a, it's, it's a self-fulfilling uh, event, photography is, uh, right. in, in, in all aspects, whether I'm out in the field or I'm actually trying to understand the technology behind it or I'm doing any post-processing. It's a form of meditation for me, Nathan. Absolutely. And who doesn't like appreciation, right? So I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, if oh. something comes back as a... Abs absolutely, Nathan. Yeah, yeah. Great. So, so Deepak, tell us uh, about how often do you practice, uh, you know, uh, travel photography? I know uh, travel means you, 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 you need to plan, you need to go. But I'm, I, I, can, I, can I also ask you, you know, despite of your busy schedules that uh, you are at work and you uh, are at, uh, you know, in general in your life, uh, personal and professional life, do you just, uh, there, are there times where you just pick up your camera and then say, okay, you know, to help with it, let me just go and, you know, click something, uh, you know, there's something beautiful happening, some event happening. I don't know, you know, so do, do, are you a planned guy or are you, are you just, uh, you know, just pick up and just go? I, I think really it's a bit of both. Uh, there are lots of things that I would do on instinct. You know, recently we've had uh, Comet Neowise and right. viewings of that. So I'll be in, at Godsend Hours, you know, in a park, fortunately, behind my house where it's uh, relatively dark and I've taken a few shots and uh, been out there. Uh, if there are any festivals occurring or if the weather's good, you know, we are entirely weather dependent in the UK. Right. Then that's where the instinctive stuff comes into play, Mithun. But uh, for me, uh, the only place to photograph in the world, to be perfectly honest, is India. Wow. I absolutely love uh, photographing in India and uh, I think some people will be very surprised if, if I honestly tell you, and this is a fact, that I've spent every single holiday dollar of mine 
for the last eight years in India. I do not travel anywhere else to photo, especially to photograph. I would only ever come to India because I absolutely love uh, all India has to offer. And, uh, and we, we, we love you back uh, as well, uh, Deepak, you know, so like I mentioned at the start of the conversation that I have per personally traveled with you multiple times. I know a lot of, of my photographer friends who have been with you on various trips. So uh, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, every, everybody has a preference. A uh, lot of people, uh, you know, look at, uh, you know, certain places uh, to offer. And like we, we, we say in India that, you know, that uh, one lifetime is less for you to finish off everything in India. You know, so, so I guess uh, that's very true. Absolutely. And uh, fortunately, uh, I changed the way I work in the last few years. Uh, so for the last five years, uh, I plan my work around my photography trips to India and uh, everything happens with uh, the expectation of Mecca Baunga, you know, when's the next trip back home? Uh, although I have lived here for 40 plus years now, uh, this is not home really, this is uh, somewhere to live. Home is uh, for me where the heart is and the heart has always been in India. So, right. uh, yeah, you know, uh, yes, you get magnificent uh, uh, architecture in places like Venice, you know, if you want to go and photograph there, you go to Italy, you go to some places in Spain, it's okay. Uh, but uh, what we have in India uh, is very, very special, I think. Uh, and uh, there, is, there is an awful lot left to, to do and see and enjoy. Absolutely. And I think... Uh... Uh, you, you probably are an inspiration for a lot of people uh, here in India who feel, uh, you know, that uh, we need to go west, you need to go, you know, to other places to actually uh, shoot, you know, uh, because, because, you know, I have completed these many cities, these many places, you know, so now there's nothing more, you know, that's, that's what I normally hear from a lot of people. So, so I think uh, what you rightly said, you know, that uh, there is such a lot more to, to, to experience and to shoot. You know, if you, oh, if you really want to I, I absolutely concur with you, Mithun. I mean, when I speak to my friends, let's say my friends in, uh, in, in Bangalore or my friends in Mumbai or my friends in, you know, Baroda or Ahmedabad, oh, you know, I tell them, you know, have you been to Meghalaya? Have you been to Manipur? Have you been to Assam? Uh, the answer is no. I said, but, you know, you will spend thousands of pounds to go on a trip to Europe or go to America and, you know, have your pictures there. And I said, what you are missing really is what's on your doorstep, which is absolutely fabulous. And there is, there is nothing like it in my view. I mean, I have lots and lots of uh, friends here uh, in the UK. I know a lot of people through social media and uh, nice. most of them have a craving and my favorite place in the world is uh, Varanasi, you know, and I have so many white friends who just want to be in one place and that's Banaras all the time. That's all, that's all they want to do because it's the best place in the world. It's got everything. We, we should uh, recommend you to become ambassador for India, Deepak. Uh, I would be very <laughs> delighted to. I, I mean, I, I, I tell people over here, you know, what are you guys doing? Why do you want to, you know, what's wrong with you guys, you know, my friends? And, you know, India is not about, especially my Gujarati relatives here, you know, they will go to, I'll give you a very simple example. And sorry, you can ask me to shut up, Mithun. No, no. Uh, I'll just, uh, uh, just, just mention one thing. Uh, you know, they will say, oh, me Ahmedabad gaya tha. you know, we've been to Ahmedabad, they'll say to me. And I said, okay, what did you do? Shopping karwa gaya tha. I said, you know, did you, did you really do anything? You know, did you see, did you go to Adalaj Wow, Dada Harir Wow? And uh, it's interesting because uh, on my last trip to Ahmedabad, I got uh, into an auto rickshaw and I said to him, can you take me to Dada Harir Wow? And the auto wala said to me, Saab, tame kya thi na wocho? You know, where are you from? I said, oh, England thi na wocho. They said, oh, yeah, no, so Dada Harir Wow, jo na jai. You know, I, we would not go. Nobody here, no local would go to Dada Harir Wow. For me, 
it's the most magnificent and the most beautiful step well you will see people will might go to you know ranki wow they might go to adalaj but nobody goes to next time i recommend anybody in ahmedabad go there it's absolutely. beautiful it's absolutely beautiful i mean there are some real jewels like uh, when i went to karnataka i went to a place called krp krishna rajpeet you know right. magnificent temple there and my driver said ye kidare you know i i had to direct the damn guy right you know saying look it's here we need to go here he said i've never been right and uh, you know i mean <clears throat> what does india not have i could just go on so you'll have to ask me to shut up mithun no 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 that's fine absolutely we pleasure to hear you know about our door step uh, you know from you uh, specifically great so uh, so deepak can you please share some of your achievements uh, in 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 the field of uh, travel photography mm, very simple big no i have none i have uh, uh, as i've already said uh, i do not enter competitions nor do i aspire to any recognition or achievements for me photography is just a pure form of pleasure and uh, a source of happiness wonderful and i think uh, uh, for a lot of people uh, you know it's a choice so i think uh, you know uh, if if we all start running behind uh, you know the rat race everywhere so i guess uh, you know we might end up into only competing and you know forgetting what we actually got into photography for uh, so i think uh, there's nothing wrong in that uh, deepak uh, but yeah i mean there's there are of course there are, there are preferences a lot of people uh, Absolutely. also want to get in uh, to you know to be acknowledged and to be recognized but yeah, uh, yeah i think uh, uh, you're right absolutely right i think uh, a lot of people that i meet like you do tell me this and i think uh, i agree so that that's yeah. great i mean and uh, you know each to their own is what i say for me it never has been a feature of my life uh, from that point of view yeah. and uh, really um, just happy doing what i do uh so deepak can you tell us uh, something about uh, you know are you part of any uh, photography communities any facebook groups that you follow or anything that uh, you know that you are in particularly associated with you know with, especially with respect to travel photography uh yeah travel photography uh travel can be on your doorstep travel can be you know half around the world travel can be wherever it, it, you you want it to be really uh i'm a member of a of a of a nice little local photography group we eventually filtered out you know and now we have a a, a small bunch of uh, guys and girls and uh, we just like going on outings we'll go in a bit of fun we'll take a few photographs whether it's a, a festival whether it's landscape photography in the peak district which is on my doorstep luckily lake district is a bit too far to go on a day trip but peak district is uh, not too far in derbyshire uh from from where i live so we'd we'd go there on a long day trip or something like that we'll go and have a photograph or two but uh, at the end of it uh we all do like to go and have a couple of beers have <laughs> a chat and uh, basically complete the day and uh, that 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 for me is uh, very important to have uh, a nice feeling of happiness Uh, at the end of the day in in whatever you do uh in the past i have tried to be a member of uh, many uh local photography groups but uh, uh excuse my language but most of the people you meet in those groups they've got their heads up their asses if you like you know they're really really uh uh highly competitive in 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 the in in their nature and uh they are very much into one upmanship you know a bit like oh look mine is better than yours kind of thing and really it doesn't fit in with my uh, non competitive nature so i've dropped out of those groups over as uh, time has progressed great okay so so deepak do you, do you receive critics uh, for your work as well and uh, you know how do you handle them especially this question is very important for aspiring photographers because you know there is a lot of people especially the youngsters who come into into you know wanting to try photography or you know they are very good in their fields but then 
you know the moment they hear somebody telling them oh you know what i did not like your photograph or you know here there is so much of uh, you know the composition is wrong or you know whatever you know so some some kind of feedback you know upsets them and a lot of people then start getting you know a little on the other end you know they start justifying you know so so what 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 kind of uh, tips do you have you know if you how do you handle them okay so it's very very simple for me uh i i just say to the budding photographers enjoy your time behind the lens you know life is too short don't get too hung up you know it's not important yes listen to your masters listen to your seniors uh, take it away from them but uh, you know always don't get hung up especially on gear you know people will say oh mere paas ye 2.8 hai mere paas wo 2.8 hai ye hai you know mere paas g master hai mere paas l series hai you know look guys i can give you the finest ingredients you are not going to cook a fine meal for me my mother would cook from three basic ingredients the finest meal and i'm saying honestly guys don't get hung up on gas you know gear acquisition syndrome best thing best advice i can give to the young guys is learn what you have make sure you know how to get the most out of the gear you have it's not important to have the latest and greatest you know really really it's uh, uh, try when 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 you are especially doing uh, street work or especially when you are going to approach somebody uh, and say you know i'd like to take a photograph of you uh, make sure you know what you are going to get out of that that photograph before you even approach them yes. and think about it you know get the photograph in your mind before you even have hold the camera up to take a picture it really is very important and let me tell you understand the rules learn the rules but break the rules you know you don't have to follow all the rules you might have to for competition purposes and so on and i can respect that and i understand that because there has to be a level playing field for those and it's a hard task for the judges i am sure but uh, you know just just enjoy your time you know you will become a better photographer i promise you uh the less hung up you get about rules and about gas gas i believe today is a big issue people always want to get together and talk about new gear new gear new gear no no learn what you have you only got what you've got make the most of it right i think uh, you know you touched upon a very very uh, you know delicate point out here uh, deepak you know because uh, uh, in fact uh, this is probably you know the nth time that i'm hearing uh, you know from from a lot of people and a lot of people actually uh, you know uh, come down and say i have got this lens today i bought this you know and they 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 try to show you know that see my 2.8 is better than your 3.5 you know kind of stuff which is okay you know so you can always have gears uh, but then i can tell you this from my personal experience as well deepak you know because as you know i did my two solo exhibitions uh, last year a mm-hmm. uh, lot of people who came you know who were novices they were they were not even photographers you know they were just normal uh, you know people in their lives uh, you know common people who came down uh, first and foremost they got to see uh, you know an exhibition quality you know prints and exhibition quality uh, you know images uh, to on their doorstep you know in their own cities but what was more interesting was that people came and said uh, oh this picture i also saw i have also clicked this sunset but uh, you know what your lens is better your you know so, you know your camera probably you know does the trick so so you know they they never wanted to give credit to the photographer you know but uh, but to the you know to the, to either the uh, post processing skills or you know to to the camera and i had to tell them that you know i i just use a crop sensor uh, body i don't even use a full frame you know so for your information i don't even use uh, a high end uh, you know full frame or a mirrorless uh, to even talk about kind of stuff and that those things don't matter and i think that's a very critical uh, input that you mentioned about the gas uh, syndrome i mean this is the first time in fact i'm hearing it i'm i'm glad i i'm actually sharing this uh, that uh, you can have you know 
tons of equipments uh, deposited into your into your homes but if you do not know the right techniques if you do not do the right things if you are not ethical when you uh, click if you if you do not understand you know how how to uh, you know give space privacy you know especially when you are into travel street and all that even for that matter wildlife and nature you know kind of stuff so i think you know irrespective of how many awards or what you win you know you will never be uh, you know an established uh, photographer for for I, sure i absolutely agree mithun and uh, you know when you are doing street photography you have to be very mindful of the 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 people you are going to photograph yes some people will stand you know miles away use their zoom lenses and capture images of people i like the intimacy i like to develop a relationship with my subject in the first instance and i don't want them to feel intimidated by me carrying huge gear and uh, the other part of this also i have noticed is you have a lot of people lugging uh, an awful lot of uh, equipment i think people need to rationalize and ration what they carry especially when they do travel photography because otherwise you just get overwhelmed with the amount of gear you've got and uh, it becomes a tiring day you know if you are out uh, hiking walking for right. you know you know 12 12 to 17 kilometers and you will go out there and you want to take some photos you are so wrecked by the time you've got where you need to be because you are lugging so much gear that you say i don't feel like doing anything now the mind basically is not uh in uh, in synchronism anymore with the body the body says look i've given up the mind wants to do it the body says i cannot deliver and you know it becomes a battle so i think we need to understand yes the right gear at the right time and the best gear is the gear you have with you not what you've got back at home what you have on you so learn to make the most of it learn what you can do with it and uh absolutely try and 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 try and be happy and satisfied you know i get an awful lot of guys uh who will say oh wish i'd brought my other lens with me you know it's sat there gathering dust at home no no concentrate on what you've got on you guys be happy that you have the opportunity you are in this wonderful scenario be happy right i i don't have to agree with that uh, deepak so uh, you know so coming to you know the the current state so we know that uh, you know the digital world is blooming technology is there in every aspect of uh, our lives uh, you know uh, and and naturally into photography as well now what i mean by that is uh, you know it's not just uh, on the equipment side you know where technology has advanced uh, you know right from uh, where we were you know couple of decades back like you were mentioning you know where we are you started to today but also probably in, in terms of you know software accessories uh, you know and lots and lots of thing especially artificial intelligence and other things so what do you think is uh, going to be the future and what scope will technology play uh, you know into photography um so that's uh, i think uh, today's photographers really face a huge challenge because uh, one uh, every day there is something new to look at uh and uh, the availability you know it's it's more within the reach of more people nowadays uh and then you've got all this software uh for post processing and so on and people think koi baat nahi you know i'll take a picture you know if the photo's not good i'll go home and i'll use uh you know luminar or i'll use skylum yeah i'll use topaz ai to get rid of noise and i'll do all these things so i think the discipline today has changed tremendously and sadly i believe that the actual art of photography has been forgotten a lot mython and we need to bring it back into as i said earlier learn what you have and learn it well and uh, yes there are many many distractions everybody has a preference when it comes to their equipment when it comes to their software and sure use what you are comfortable with but use it don't feel get too distracted because it's very easily done in this day and age you get lots and lots of forums 
with everybody saying, oh yes, which is your favorite lens? What will you take out with you? When you come home, what will be your uh, workflow? How are you going to process it, et cetera? So I think it's a very confusing field and uh, it's, it's very challenging for the, for the new guys. All I can say is focus on what you've got, learn what you have well, and then if you want to migrate from uh, one product to another or one post-processing piece of software to another, if you learn the fundamentals well, then it will bring rewards and you will benefit from it. So I think, I think it's, it's, it's a very challenging time for the, the, the youngsters these days. But at the same time, I, I personally feel, Deepak, that you know, it's mm -hmm. also good that you know, the technology has uh, enabled you know, not just from an affordability perspective, but also from the perspective of, uh, you know, a lot of things that was impossible earlier, uh, you know, especially, uh, I mean, you need to learn where to stop and where to, you know, start. So I think if you can do that, uh, there's, there's no harm in using it because it makes it uh, makes life uh, convenient as well. You know, so I, I, I absolutely agree with you, but uh, I'll give you a very simple example. You know, people do an awful lot of HDR stuff you see in social media, frankly, a lot of it looks very cartoony. Right. Yeah, because uh, what they are trying to do is trying to do it beyond the realms of possibility. Right. And uh, you, you, can, you can overdo things, you can underdo things. As I say, understand the boundaries, you know. Uh, right. you, 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 you keep within the SEMA, the boundary. Always, it's important, stay within especially in the landscape and the street field, you know, try and stay within. I see a lot of guys who will do portrait stuff and they'll submit it on social media, say, what do you think to this processed work? And you look at, you look at them sometimes and you say, well, you've overdone something. And when you point it out, sometimes they don't like it. But I will only comment if I get asked for a critique. Never otherwise, I'll just right. pass by. I'm not interested. But if they ask for it, then I'll give them my constructive comments on it. But you see a lot, I mean, there are so many places, you'll see a lot of panel work done as well, where the first thing you have to do with panel is turn off, if you have image stabilization, you need to turn it off. You have to set your white balance correctly. A lot of people will say, oh, koi batne, you know, tripod pera ko gumao, you know, char photo lo or ghar pe and stitch it. No, it looks absurd when you do it that way. But you see a lot of that as well. So it's about learning the subtleties and, and learning it well. And then yes, if you've got good uh, HDR processing software or good panel stitching software, then you'll get more out of it. Absolutely. And I think uh, for the benefit of the viewers, I would like to uh, let everybody know that Deepak is an ardent fan of uh, Fuji cameras. His uh, his XT three that he uses, uh, you know, has two, a two, two. X, XT uh, sorry XT two uh, the the model that he uses has a beautiful auto pano feature uh, inbuilt into it, and I've seen it personally myself when I've traveled with him. That uh, all that you need is uh, start to end, you know, just move your yeah. uh, pan your this thing, and it, you, the entire software inside the camera stitches it automatically. There's nothing beautiful than then what you can do. Yeah, unfortunately, that doesn't give you a raw file method. It's JPEG. So it's okay for a quick, dirty right. panel uh, right. to get a feel for the, for the image. But if you really want to do it, then uh, sit back, learn right. how to do it well, uh, <clears throat> and uh, see some good examples of it. And uh, Absolutely. then, then it's, uh, then it's uh, happy times. Great. So, so what are your future plans, Deepak, with respect to photography? You know, so what, what do you plan, how do you plan to achieve? You know, so do you want to uh, practice something else as well in addition to travel or how is it? Uh, uh, I really want to do more street work in India, street photography. Uh, there are many, many places I want to visit in India, Bundi, Orcha, uh, some of the places that are on my wish list right. and uh, definitely uh, would like to see those. I'd like to see, explore some more of the Seven Sisters uh, states as well and uh, have some happy, happy times there. Uh, in terms of uh, actual uh, technical perspective, obviously I'm, I think, uh, 
hopefully you'll have gathered that I'm quite interested in the science uh, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of the cameras as well and how the sensor technology develops and uh, I'm very excited about some of the things that are com coming uh, out in uh, the field of signal processing and uh, noise reduction techniques as well that are used using what is called frame averaging uh, because obviously noise is random the more pictures you take hopefully when you bring them all together uh, you can uh, cancel a lot of the noise out as well and you get some amazing pictures uh, doing uh, frame averaging then there is uh, there are other techniques that are used as well for shadow recovery and so on but uh, all that uh, I think will find its way into the kind of cameras we use over time. Uh, uh, at the moment, I see a lot of good work that's being done by phase one in Denmark on these technologies. And uh, I'm a big follower of uh, phase one and everything they do. Right, great. great. So, uh, so Deepak, do you publish your work uh, on social media platforms? If yes, uh, can you list out your handles and where people can follow you? Uh, sure, yeah, yeah. You can see most of my work. It's all public on Facebook. I'm just uh, simply known as uh, Deepak Samani. That's D double E with two E's, Samani, S A M A N I. Uh, I'm on Instagram as well. Again, Deepak underscore Samani. I'm on Flickr. Again, Deepak Samani, uh, I feel free to have a look and comment and uh, criticize uh, guys, please, uh, uh, some of what I have put out there. And uh, uh, I, uh, I, I think uh, social media is a wonderful way of sharing and uh, getting your, your, your work out there. And uh, I, I do it because I just want to share happiness. There is no, there is no other motive or purpose behind it. And I can, I can see that on your face. So, you know, while, while you're talking, so I think uh, that itself shows, uh, you know, the pleasure that you get. But Absolutely. I think, uh, I think Deepak, uh, the, uh, you know, a sub question to this also would be, uh -huh. uh, you know, the, the fact that, uh, you know, today social media is, is such a, such an important part of everybody's life, you know, especially for, uh, you know, the new newbie photographers, amateur photographers, aspiring photographers, hobbies, you know, so, so, you know, so everybody feels, you know, they should put their, uh, you know, their pictures online, you know, whatever, whatever they put in, doesn't matter, you know, what genre of photography or what, what is it that they put in, but, uh, you know, is it, do you think it's important to highlight, uh, you know, uh, your work on to, onto these platforms, uh, whichever it is, doesn't matter which name we take, but do you think it is important to highlight? Um, I think so, especially if uh, people do have uh, certain aspirations in terms of getting out, getting yourself known, making it a vocation, uh, and, uh, you know, evolving it as a business, whether, you know, uh, it complements uh, other services you offer or not. I, I think it's, uh, it's a very useful medium, yes. And, uh, you know, it, it can be complementary to various things. You know, your photographs can complement uh, travel services that you may offer or your photography may show the best of your, right. your, your food stuff or you, if you are a, a, a designer of, uh, you know, a, a, a fashion designer, you know. If, if, if you can do some of that, when you're starting out and money is tight, you can complement uh, various disciplines and uh, make them pay, should you wish to. Right, absolutely. And I think uh, as, as photographers, it is our, uh, you know, social and moral responsibility also to, you know, to showcase, uh, you know, the, the places uh, that we are in, the, you know, like you rightly said, the food, the local culture, you know, uh, you know, a lo lot of things that you can document and show. It, it is not necessary that you only show, you know, the sadness in a place or uh, the wrong things that are happening in a place. You know, th there are categories, uh, you know, uh, in, in, in photography, which, which do give you that opportunity, like photojournalism, for example, you know, and other, other places. But, you know, I think as a, uh, you know, as a photographer, even if you, uh, you know, even if you do file life, even if you do macro, even if you do product for that matter you know so there is so much to you know to do uh, you know to to tell people through, through your stories i think that's very critical 
Oh. Uh, abs absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we just need to embrace it all and uh, not exclude these things in our lives. Yes, there is an awful lot of uh, things going on. We currently face uh, this situation globally, but uh, let, let us see some glimmer of hope, you know, uh, out of, uh, outside of it. And, you know, uh, at the moment, we just have to make do with what we have on our do doorstep. And I've been seeing some wonderful photographs by you from your balcony, Mithun. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, and you know, these are the things, now we have chance uh, to do a little bit of what I'm going to call introspection, whether that's within us or on our doorstep. So let, let's go out and do it and have some fun and uh, not be too disheartened. Absolutely. And I think you touched a, a very important point uh, by mentioning my balcony. You know, the reason is, uh, let me tell you this, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a travel photographer myself, uh, li like you, you know, so, so uh, 2020, you know, right from March till now, it's been nearly six odd months. And I'm sure in next uh, four or five odd months that is left in this year, there's not going to be any travel, you know, irrespective of whatever uh, the situation is, how much better, uh, you know, it, it becomes around us. But it gave an opportunity for, for me and I'm for, uh, for a lot of people to do indoors, you know, to stay indoors, to do indoors, you know, because photography is something that will not go out, you know, out of the, out of the DNA, out of the blood. So, you know, I explored into a lot of, uh, you know, indoor stuff, you know, product still life, uh, which, uh, you know, was only a distant dream and, and nothing was, you know, taught. It was all trial and error. Some things worked very well. Some things did not, you know, kind of stuff. And I think, uh, uh, so that is a very important lesson for people that you don't need to always travel, always do things. You don't need to get disappointed. It is natural to get, feel, uh, you know, uh, sad or unhappy that I, oh, you know what, my travel plans were to go to Ladakh or Spiti Valley for, you know, for taking the trails, but you know what, I can't go. That's okay. There's always next year, you know, so Absolutely. Kind of stuff. Uh, so I think uh, that's, that's very critical. Uh, also to the point, uh, since you mentioned about the balcony, you know, I, I, I know, I know I'm getting stuck to the balcony, but then, you know, let me tell you this, that uh, I tell this to a lot of people, uh, whether they are photographers or not, that if you observe sunrise and sunset every day, standing at the same point, looking at the same sun, which comes and goes around us, the, uh, around earth, irrespective of the place that we stay, country, continent, wherever we do, you will find every day it is different. It is absolutely, uh, you know, uh, mesmerizing to see the drama that it creates, you know, every time it is absolutely different. So yes. uh, you need to find time. You know, you, you cannot be saying you don't have time. Some days, yes. But, you know, if, if, you, if you really take out, if you really want to enjoy nature, if you really want to enjoy uh, you know, it, it's, it's like this, right? When you do street, uh, Deepak, I'm sure you agree that uh, you go to the same place every year, you'll find, you know, the street is same, but the people are different. The, Absol you know, absolutely. Even, in fact, even probably every day, you know, why, why every yeah, year? Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, if, 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 if you drill down your example of uh, a sunrise or a sunset, you know, it's evolving and changing in front of your eyes. You know, the nature's painting it for you. You only have to look. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, we, all, we, we only have to be mindful and look at it, Mithun. And right. I think a lot of people are just too distracted. Uh, they, leave, uh, they, they, they leave their eyes and their thoughts at home on other things. Just, just take a little bit of time out. I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, once they relax the rules here on social distancing, half a dozen of us went for a walk. Yeah, and this lady in, on the walk, she said, oh, Deepak Bhai, we have to be back uh, by 5.30 uh, because, you know, I need to do X, Y, and Z. I said, so your mind is only on one thing. You are not enjoying the beauty or making the most of this walk and my company. I have given up my time to be with you, right. but you are now focused on one thing. So I say to people, just take a little bit of time out, you know. Right. It's, it's precious. Time is the only thing you will not get back. Other right. things you will, you can try, you know, koya heto paoge, you know, it will come back. Time right. is one thing that will never come back. So make the most of it. You Absolutely. Know. Absolutely. Ca capture those happy moments. That's important. 
right right so whatever makes you happy you should definitely do that absolutely absolutely so last question for you Bola. deepak uh, is uh, you know have you heard about honeycomb creative support uh, you know uh, that's based out of bangalore hyderabad and and mumbai and specifically the photostop uh, printing brand uh, you know that that honeycomb has uh, have you used the services if not have you heard from anybody uh, you know anything that you want to let us know uh, so my my um, contact with honeycomb has really been through you when you did your exhibition and i've seen a couple of other exhibitions as well uh, I, I follow a few few indian photographers and i've seen some pages and uh, personally i have not used honeycomb but uh, i would definitely want to next time i'm in 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 bangalore i'd really like to touch base and understand uh, uh, especially what their service offering is in terms of printing and, absolutely uh, and 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 see where that takes me and uh, because to find somebody who understands photography who prints well uh, the bulk standard commercial printers uh, will not faithfully do the work for you and i really uh, don't print sufficiently to invest in uh, an a3 uh, or an a2 printer at home uh, uh, but uh, uh, apart from that, really, I have very little exposure to Honeycomb or uh, its uh, subsidiaries. Absolutely. And uh, let me tell you this, that uh, Deepak, uh, you know, I have been, uh, you know, customer of Honeycomb for uh, more than five or, five or six years now. Uh, not because, you know, I am doing this, I have to tell you this, but then, uh, you know, I think you will love them. The reason is, you know, they are like you, you know, who believe in relationship you know, who believe in, you know, giving recommendations, you know, and, uh, you know, I think in this field of printing, you know, you have a lot of printers, I'm sure, you know, in India, you have in, in at your side as well, you have so many of them, and most of them are online, you don't even need to personally go and talk to anybody. But I think the, the USP also is the fact that, uh, you know, the subject matter expertise into this is very important. So what looks good, you know, just because, uh, you know, Deepak says print it on this, of course, you know, I will print if that's your wish. But then if, if you get a recommendation, you know what, why don't you try canvas? Why don't you try a premium luster? Why don't you try this media, you know, or something else? You know, I think that's the critical piece of advice that you get. Choice is, of course, yours as to how you want to do it, because at the end of the day, it's your art kind of stuff. So I think, uh, you know, and, and I'm sure you are aware that, uh, you know, they, they do ship uh, international as well. Uh, okay. you know, so, so kind of stuff. So you should definitely, you know, next time you be here, you know, you should come down, you should see the facility where it gets printed, you know, and, and all that. So I'm, I'm sure uh, you know, there'll be ample opportunities for you and your uh, fellow photographer friends as well. Absolutely. I'd love to do that, Mithun. Great. So uh, finally, uh, finally, finally, you know, not, not to hold you for any, any more uh, long time. Uh, My glass is empty. <laughs> Do you want to refill it? <laughs> no, no, I'm good. <laughs> Great. Uh, I know that you are going to do a, you know, a webinar on travel photography. You have agreed to share your experiences, your work, you know, with a wider audience. Uh, so do you want to talk about it, Deepak, just before we conclude? Um, yes. So basically I think, uh, I'm going to be, I'm on with you guys on Saturday, the 22nd, correct Mithun? That's right. From, uh, 7 to 8 30 PM your time. And I think that's uh, 2 30 to 4 PM, uh, British standard time. And, uh, I basically look forward to, uh, meeting some more people and forming happy relationships. And, uh, I'll try not to upset anybody. I promise. No, I think uh, uh, all those who are listening, you know, not just because Deepak is known to me, but I will tell you that uh, you will not get disappointed. You will, in fact, be uh, getting, you know, uh, bowled over by by his uh, humility, by his work, uh, by the stories, you know, because he's an excellent story uh, teller. I, I can guarantee you that. Uh, so invest uh, your investment of, uh, you know, 90 minutes into the into the webinar on uh, Saturday August 22nd is, uh, you know, is going to be a lifetime experience. I can vouch for that. Uh, so, you know, please do, please do join us. Uh, you know, please join Deepak and me, you know, in, in that conversation where you'll get to see his work and, you know, maybe Deepak will share some 
some of tips and tricks for you to for all you aspiring travel photographers as well so i think uh, you know it's all in all going to be a beautiful session thank you very much deepak uh, thank you gl glad you could uh, take time on on a friday afternoon you know i know you were busy uh, but you know i still thought uh, let's do it so that uh, you know we we get our folks to to hear you out you know your uh, your humor as well so i think uh, uh, all in all a good time spent okay and now as a good jew i'm going to go and make some handwo it's uh, <laughs> it's it's time to cook guys Great. very important for me okay take care take and care. Uh, thank you and have a good weekend guys bye bye thank you